Well, do we have a treat in store for you this hour? Before we get started, I'm going to introduce a, a couple of folks from Lego. You're going to see some amazing things. I want to remind you that tonight we have the global premiere of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, in 3D right here. But first, we have a real treat for you. I want to please join me in welcoming to the stage John McCormick and Keith Malone from Lego. Come on up, John McCormick. Hey there, everybody. Thanks very much for coming to the panel today. My name is Keith Malone, and I'm director of content development. And what that means is I create stories for the Lego company. Um, and some of the best stories that I get to create are Lego Star Wars stories. And the reason I'm talking to you today is because a long time ago, actually in 2005, but it seems like a long time ago, we had this idea that Lego and Star Wars could create content that kids all over the world would like to see. So we had this idea and we came to Lucasfilm and we pitched a gentleman who's sitting here in the audience and said, five minutes, give us five minutes and we'll tell a story and it'll be fun. It was called Revenge of the Brick and it played pretty well. Um, people seemed to like it and from there, we started making longer form content, 22 minutes, things like Padawan Menace and The Empire Strikes Out. Thank you. <laughs> then to the Yoda Chronicles and to another project we're going to talk to you about today. So there seems something that we've hit upon that's the combination of Lego and Star Wars together is something that brings two great brands together, tells great stories, makes kids laugh. And what we're going to take you through is a little retrospective, a little history on some of the content that we've created along the way. Not the droid you're looking for! Thanks very much. Hey, everybody. My name is John. And uh, way back in 2001, this guy right here hired me as a designer at Lego. Maybe one of the best decisions of his career. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these days, I get to help define and shape uh, the Lego Star Wars brand. Um, and that's a, a truly meaningful job for me. And about 14 months ago, this guy called me up again, and he said, hey. Would you mind heading out to Lucasfilm to uh, maybe talk about uh, some new TV shows? And I'm thinking to myself, childhood dreams fulfilled? Yes. Bucket list? Check. So off I went. And uh, after spending $400 in the employee store there, 
Uh, we got together and uh, had a yeah, whole bunch. I, I think it was a little more than four hundred dollars. My wife's in the audience. It was four hundred. <laughs> um, but we got together with the fine folks at Lucasfilm and uh, came up with what you're about to see see here. Um, this is a, a retelling of the movies, um, a Lego version of the movies. And uh, they're a little bit wacky and wild, that's for sure. And we've certainly taken a lot of liberties. Thank you, Howard Rothman, for uh, allowing us to do so. Thank you, Howard. <laughs> um, but uh, the story is told um, by C-3PO. So it's kind of uh, his Lego version of the six movies. And uh, right now we'll play what we're calling the awareness spot. Uh, it's the, the first piece of content that we finished for Droid Tales 2015. The Jedi have returned, and the Rebel Alliance has destroyed the dreaded Death Star. Again. We are the bosses of blowing up Death Stars. After a well-earned party, some of the victorious rebels set off to embark on a new beginning. But Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, and Han Solo want to hear the thrilling tale of how the conflict all began. The taxation of trade routes to outlying star systems was in dis... Perhaps I should fast forward. Now, for the first time on television, the complete Star Wars saga is retold. Thrill to the story of how Anakin Skywalker became the evil Darth Vader. Wait, what? Luke's father is Darth Vader? Everybody knows that. And R2 and I were right in the thick of it. Scenes you wish had happened. <laughs> and scenes you wish hadn't happened. Oh, goody goody gumdrops! Help! <laughs> All of your Star Wars favorites have returned. My concession school is <laughs> Some for longer than others. <laughs> Two blades. That is so awesome, 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 and awesome. Cut that out. See how it all began in the new Star Wars series, Droid Tales. And find out what happened to R2-D2. And who is this mysterious stranger? To find out more, you can visit lego.com slash Star Wars. Ask your parents' permission before going online. Not done showing off yet, I am. I'll just let myself out. Thanks very much. So uh, let's talk about what you just saw uh, with the guys who helped create it. Come on out. So we'd like to call out our panelists. Our first panelist is Jason Kosler. Jason works for the Lego company. He works with me in content development, and he is our guy on the street day to day, works with Lucasfilm, making sure that we don't do anything that uh, isn't true to the Lego brand or the Star Wars brand. It's a big job, and you know he cries a little time, but it's okay. It's, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he's going to talk a little bit about uh, what it's like to work for these two great brands and, and how we go about the process. And next we have Michael Price. Uh, he's our executive producer, writer, voice of Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> he's written every TV sh show for us since 2011. And please also welcome Michael Donovan. He is, you know, every piece of animation, the best thing that you can do, the way you can get the most out of it, is through voice direction of incredible talent. And this gentleman is the genius who makes it all happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, gentlemen. Good to see you. Yeah. So we're going to start with Jason. He's going to remember uh -oh. to get all my uh, questions right here. So, how does Lego approach storytelling for the Star Wars franchise? We kind of just make it up as we go, to be quite <laughs> honest with you. I don't know. I was hoping you'd have something more than that. You I have all know. these people if here. Lucasfilm's in the audience. They don't really know that. Um, no, um, it, that's a great question. I mean, we all know that right now that, uh, that Lego is one of the most popular brands in the world right now if not the most popular brand in the world. You know, children all over the world uh, spend over five billion hours a year playing with Lego bricks. You know, so we know from that, just that number alone that there's a lot of engagement and a lot of creativity and building with the Lego brand. So from a storytelling perspective, we want to try to capture that same engagement and that same creativity um, within our content. So no matter what project we start and no matter what partner that we work with, we always, at the beginning of each project, always ask the question of ourselves and to our partner, what is it about this that makes this content Lego? Aside from just a look at the minifigures, what can we do within this content to visually show the, the, 
the, the building and the creativity aspect of the Lego brand, just as real kids in the real world play with Lego bricks. Once we answer that question, we have our Lego foundation to build upon, uh, to build a great story with our partner, uh, and then we just kind of go from there and then see what makes sense. Um, with Droid Tales, for example, uh, we knew that we had uh, this opportunity to make this content, and it was originally going to be um, some original content. But we knew with episode seven coming out that this is perfect timing for us to retell the stories in Lego form leading up to the release of episode seven. Thank you. How closely um, is a collaboration between uh, Lego and Lucasfilm in, in developing these stories? How close do you work with your that compadres? Are they in the audience? Right they now? are in the audience. They're in the audience. <laughs> Uh, we work very, very closely with Lucasfilm, um, and they are amazing partners to work with. Um, no, no, uh, um, uh, in all honesty, uh, they are great partners to work with, and one of the great things about partnering with them is that they give us a lot of leeway uh, with their Star Wars character in Lego minifigure form. Just the mere fact of turning a true Star Wars character into a minifigure opens up the doors just creatively as wide as possible for us to have a lot of leeway with their characters. Um, but within that, Lucasfilm uh, is really, really great in that even though that we have that leeway, they are still on board to guide us in the Star Wars direction to make sure that we don't go too far outside the box. Uh, so, uh, you know, they always ask the question of, you know, would this character do this in the Lego Star Wars world? Would this particular character interact with this character in the Star Wars universe? Uh, so they're there to guide us to make sure that even though we have this leeway with our, star, with, our, with our Lego minifigures, that we don't create something that otherwise would not be possible in the Lego Star Wars world, in the actual Star Wars universe, I'm sorry. Nice. And finally, what's, a, what's one of your favorite funniest bits of the past? Uh, oh, wow, there are so, so many. Yeah. Um, I would have to say pretty much any scene with the Emperor. Uh, he is just, <laughs> he's hysterical. Um, so we have this clip, I, I'm not sure if I remember which clip it is, but uh, what we're gonna show you is this really great scene with the Emperor uh, talking to Anakin Skywalker. Um, and what you're gonna see is just the Emperor's personality, which is why I just, he's my favorite character in Lego form. And what you're gonna see is the actual scene from start to finish. So you're gonna see some storyboards, some blocking and how we create the scene, and then you're gonna see the actual final scene. So uh, roll the clip. You're under arrest, Chancellor. Or should I say, Darth Sidious. Well, duh. Whoa. Get ready to say whoa again. Step back a little, hmm? <laughs> What's going on? Anakin, this mean Jedi is attacking poor old me. Ah, eat lightning, Windu. Help me, Anakin! Crackle, crackle! It's so evil. I don't know what to do! You don't? Stop hurting my friend! <laughs> ha! Whoa! Oh no! What have I done? Kind of late to say that now! Congratulations, my friend. You are no longer Anakin Skywalker, Second Street Jedi. You are Darth. Vader, the most powerful being in the galaxy. Except for me. You have to obey my every command. I made a very bad decision. What was that? Darth Vader? Darth Vader shall do thy bidding, my master. <laughs> the Jedi will be no more. <laughs> So you can kind of see in there the, uh, uh, the leeway that uh, the folks at Lucasfilm give us with our Star Wars characters, and we really, really want to thank them for that. It's great stuff. Thank you. Well, Mr. Price. Yes? You and I have been doing this for, it seems like, many years now together, huh? <laughs> yes, yeah. A couple. Uh, for you, what's the most uh, challenging part about bringing together Lego and the Star Wars universe? Wow, well, I think it's... Possibly like finding ways to fit everything I love about Star Wars in these very short movies. Uh, uh, it's such a great um, chance, opportunity for me. I've had such a fun time doing this. Um, and the, the, the films that you guys made first, you know, set the stage for this 
tone of just having fun and the sense of, of play that has just been just a huge thrill for me. And uh, in terms of a challenge, uh, it is sort of what, you know, what Jason was saying, was finding ways to sort of push the boundaries a little bit, have, have things happen, kind of silly things happen, but also figure out to make it stay within the, the Star Wars universe. And, and what's been really interesting and challenging about this, about Droy Tales is that all our previous shows were sort of happening out there, you know, there, none of them are canon. So, you know, Han Solo, you know, really didn't meet Yoda when he was eight years old, but in, uh, in, in our Lego shows he did. But, um, but now we're sort of playing inside the canon with the original movies and, and having a fine, having an uh, interesting way to sort of still have our fun and make sort of our fun points. Like for instance, that shot back there with Mace Windu always cracks me up that like, when Anakin says, what have I done, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, or I don't know what to do, you know, like, you know, it's really clear what he should have done back there, I think. But anyway, um, <laughs> so it's sort of fun to have the play with play within the characters and also sort of play the characters the way we previously established them in our previous Lego shows, like the Emperor, like you're saying, yes. uh, and then Michael will talk about the actors in a little bit, but the actor who plays the Emperor is was Trevor Hoffman, um, Trevor Duval, I'm sorry, is just brings so much humor and comedy to the part. Um, and so also with Lego, we, it was so fun to sort of play with that idea of, the, of uh, you know, the, the rotating head, the, the good side and the bad side. So anyway, uh, it's so much fun to do that. And the challenge has been sort of figuring how to make that all work. And also with these films, especially like Revenge of the Sith, is sort of finding a way to sort of tell these stories, which have some very dark elements, but also find a way to sort of make them palatable and, and okay for little kids that will be watched. Because most of these, these shows are mostly made for, for small children. Um, and their parents who like Star Wars. So to find ways to sort of um, to go, how do we how do we how do we deal with like you know Anakin falling in a lava river? <laughs> you know, so we sort of we scoot over a couple of things and have some fun with it. So that's been that was a challenge too. Um, when we brought you in to start writing this, we had a meeting, of course, with you, and uh, uh, we asked you um, how long will it take you to get an outline back to us, and you said I'll have it in a week. Uh, can you tell us what, uh, what's involved with you in the creative process? Well, uh, after I say I have it in a week and then I leave and get in my car, I like have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Why did you say that? I knew it, John. Uh, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> no, uh, well, I mean, these shows are so exciting for me creatively that I just sort of pour myself into them and um, just, just just have so much fun in terms of my creative process. Well, I've told you I have, I have a crazy way of, of writing which sometimes involves like going to a movie theater, like going to a multiplex and buying a ticket for the movie starting at like 11.30 in the, in the morning and then sitting there and doing my work while the pre-show things are playing. And then as soon as the movie starts, I leave and go to the next one <laughs> and go to the next one. That's my weird way of, of writing. Um, but um, yeah, it works, works for me. And I see a lot, I love trailers. So like that's my favorite thing in the world is to see trailers. So like that trailer is great. But um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so then, yeah, so, but for me, oh, this, will, this will help lead into what the clip that I like, is that for these shows, it's always fun for me to sort of seize on like a big, like a funny idea, uh, and then find a way to dramatize it in a funny way. So the clip you're about to see is from our, um, it's our fourth episode, but it's the one that covers The Empire Strikes Back, which is, uh, my favorite Star Wars movie, and uh, it deals with the it deals with the really real kind of consequences, kind of like what you didn't think about uh, as when when uh, everybody Han and, and everybody arrived on uh, Cloud City, and Lando had sold them out and already pre pre previously met with Darth Vader and sort of made this deal, you know, I'm going to turn you over to Darth Vader. So then it's sort of about like what happens with Darth Vader. What what is he doing when he's sitting in that little room with the with the dinner set up? Like. What is he doing while he's waiting for those guys to show up? So that's, that's what this scene is about. So we can just show that right now. Should we watch it? Let's watch. Yes, R2 went along with Luke out of loyalty and devotion, even though he was worried that they were heading right into a trap, which they were. And as it turns out, so were we. Who is this Lando, anyway? Relax. We're old buddies. He runs things here, and he can get the hyperdrive fixed. I trust him completely. He's my pal. Hey, an old buddy! Why, you 
double-crossing, no-good swindler. You got a lot of guts coming here after what you pulled. Like me pulling your leg right now? Or am I? I am! <laughs> got you! <laughs> yeah, you got me. <laughs> Come on. Come on, let me give you the grand tour. See? Nothing to worry about. There is no escape. They are going to be so surprised when Calrissian leads them all in here, and then boom, here's Vader. Sorry, sir, are you ready to order? I'm not eating, thank you. They're all going to be like, oh no, Vader is here, we're doomed. I have you now. Would you at least like to hear the specials? The chef has some wonderful- This is not a business lunch, okay? It's a trap. Admittedly, it's not the ideal room for a trap. I get that. But it was the only room available on short notice. What's Darth Vader doing here? <sighs> oh, see what you did. You messed up my timing. <laughs> Take them away. Will somebody get me off this grubby floor? <laughs> I think I prefer the floor. <laughs> so, uh, that's my favorite. Yeah, there you go. Very nice. So, Michael, Hi. how are you? I'm fine. You are a uh, veteran of many a Lego Star Wars uh, endeavor. Uh, yeah, I've been working on it a while. Yes. It's been awesome. Yep. Awesome. 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 No, anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sorry. how do you go about finding the talent, uh, the voice talent that, you know, is so well known? It's, it's yeah. pop culture. <laughs> it's iconic. How do, you, how do you go about finding it, and then how do you go about directing it. Well, it's interesting because um, doing a regular cartoon show, we create the characters. But when you come into step into something like this, where you've got, you know, to, to be a Han Solo or a, a Luke, or uh, you have to find those people. And it's not easy because uh, a voice print is, is very distinct. So when you have somebody like Han Solo, uh, when I was casting this, I kind of went, I remember thinking, Luke, I don't think we're going to have a problem. I, uh, Leia, yeah, no, we can probably get that. We were already using uh, the fellow who does Darth Vader. Um, we had uh, Tom Kane, who, you, who does Yoda. So those, those were fine. But I thought Hans, uh, Han Solo, that he's such a unique character, and he's got such a, a dynamic to him. I didn't think we were going to find him as easy as we did. But we did. How long did it take you? Uh, well, that took, actually, you know, it's funny because when we did the casting, it was the first run. Wow. And I, I was just like, it, it, there was a, um, uh, an actor that we used, uh, Michael Dangerfield is his name. Awesome guy and just amazing uh, texture to his voice. And I'm, I remember when we were actually doing the casting and, and everyone seemed to be going away from him. And I'm going, no, 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 guys. We, uh, so I have to kind of, you know, go out. I says, we need him. As as Han and uh, and so I won that one and that was I was I was happy. <laughs> they listened. Awesome. They listened to me. That was good. <laughs> so, nice. yeah. So now now sometimes we had problems with finding a character, uh, and one of them was uh, Obi Wan. So Obi Wan Kenobi, the older version, not the young version, but the older version, we were we were having some trouble. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to throw my hat into the ring because I'm also a voice actor. So. <clears throat> Because of being the voice director and then putting yourself in as a character is a little dicey. So I thought, you know, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring, but I'm going to change the name on the audition. And I, so I, call, I think I called myself uh, Matt something, right? Sedgwick. It was Joe Fake Name or something. So Joe like Fake that. Name, yeah. So, so it was like, uh, yes, that's what your uncle told you. He didn't <laughs> hold to your father's ideals, thought he should stay here and not gotten involved. <laughs> So that's what I laid, I laid it down, right? <laughs> so, but, but, but now when we're doing a, a thing like that, what we usually do for the, the, uh, the, the actors who are coming in, we give them three or four clips, and that was one of the clips was, yes, that's what your uncle told you. And Alec Guinness is an amazing actor, so I mean, you couldn't even approach that, but you get sort of a texture. What you do is you get three or four lines of what we sent them which is the clip from the original. Then you put in three or four clips without any, without any uh, voice. So now they gotta do it on their own. And that's where it really, so you can mimic, but then it's like, oh, now how would he say it 
on these other lines. So that's why we do it, so that they're not just mimicking the lines. Because as soon as you get somebody in the studio and say, okay, now just here's some new lines for you. I don't know how to do those lines, you know. So that's so that's what you have to do. So anyway, so that so works. just a did we pay you double to do that? No, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> did we, did, I do it for free. <laughs> John, were you aware of this? Sorry. <clears throat> uh, so anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you probably want to talk about your favorite clip now. My favorite <laughs> clip from uh, from the movie actually uh, is starring this gentleman right here, uh, which is interesting because Michael Price is an amazing writer. But as far as acting, I hadn't really worked with him. But we did this scene of the pod race. You remember the pod race in the, uh, in the very first uh, episode one, I guess it would be. And um, so we had this clip. And um, I laid down. When you hear the clip, we're going to do the, the animatic, followed by the blocking, followed by the finished product. The, in, in the animatic, it's my voice. And Michael and I talked after. He says, you know, he says, it's, it's right. It's, it's, a, it, you, it's good, but. You're talking about. Uh, the two-headed Fo sports, sports announcer, sports and speed, yes. right? So, so, uh, so that's so you're gonna hear. It. So Michael said, you know, I kind of do. You know what? Come over to my. I have a studio. Come over to my house. We'll record you, and then we'll stick it. And that. So ultimately, you hear this man doing Foads and Bean in this clip of the pod race. Have a look. Live on ESPA, it's the Buta Eve Pod Race Championship. Sponsored by Chelman Spaceport Cantina in Mos Eisley. You'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Coming to the starting line are today's racers. Sabalba in Speed Demon, Ben Quadinaris in the Explode at the Starting Line Mobile, and Anakin Skywalker in Destiny's Favorite. Annie, Annie, he's our guy. His midichlorian levels high. Victory is as good as ours. Fun fact, Skywalker's never successfully completed a pod race before. Huh? Say what? Great! My good feeling about this, which turned into a bad feeling about this, is now a good feeling about this. <laughs> Not again, There's a little technical mistake second. there. There's like a line from... 3PO. Uh -oh. It must be of the wrong clip. There was a line from line. C-3PO there that, that didn't make it in somehow. So Yeah, that was that was, was a pretty funny line, line too. too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that, we need that line. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, where did that line go anyway? Who's got that line? Um, I, I think I've got it here. Oh, what? Oh, uh, yeah. wait a minute. Right. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. what? Anthony Daniels Anthony. is here! <laughs> <laughs> We are so glad you showed up. <laughs> Anthony Daniels, everyone. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, that was kind of embarrassing, wasn't it? Because, you know, it wasn't... Anthony, we're so glad we're you mortified. showed up. Because you know what? We need that one line. Could you... Would you mind doing that line for us? You want me to read this yeah. stuff? If right. you could. Um, can, we, can we run it back and just let him... Uh, wait, wait. 
but I, do I remember how to do this? Oh, well, you know what, you, what you want to, this is the scene, I don't know if you remember, it was a while back. Mm. You, were, you were sad, you were, you know, Anakin is going off, you know, it's like you're, you're, you're feeling very remorseful and you're calling out to him. If you remember, there's a distance situation there right. too. So I want you sad, right. <clears throat> emote, dig right. deep. And don't forget, you're also a droid. And you're a droid, oh. so. That's, it. That's the most, thank, thank goodness. <laughs> thank you for that, I remember. Um, okay, let me just think about this. Let just, me... yeah, center, center, remember? Yeah, breathing, good. Can we roll the clip? His mom and his protocol droid must stay behind. That's gotta hurt, but Mrs. Skywalker manages to hold it together. Goodbye, Annie. And don't forget to write your name in your underwear for laundry day. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Woo! You okay? Oh, that, that was so bad. No, 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 no. It was good. I thought you were great. I didn't mean I was bad. I oh, meant all that stuff you showed before, all that unfinished sorry, footage. It sorry. was just a mess. <laughs> I mean, doesn't that give you a bad impression, all those silly little drawings that, you know, is all the background stuff? I, I don't think it's right to, to give you that, that last memory. So you know what I'm going to do to bring back your reputation? Thank you. I right, do appreciate it. You, know, you deserve it. I am, you people here are going to be the first people in the galaxy to see the first two minutes of the very first episode of, yes, Droid Tales. <laughs> As a new era dawns, the victorious rebels set off across the galaxy to begin their new mission of keeping the peace and rebuilding the Republic. And some of them were on cleanup duty. What a shambles. I was programmed to take my litter home with me. Lighten up, 3PO. We just won a war. We're allowed to get a little carried away. Of course. And no one is more jubilant than I or R2, since together we have endured three decades of unrelenting conflict. Then you two fought in the Clone Wars with Obi-Wan? Indeed. And with your father, before he became Darth Vader, of course. Wait, what? Luke's father is Darth Vader? Everybody knows that. We learned a bit months ago. I was frozen in carbonite. Sue me! 3PO, you must have amazing stories about those days. I'd love to hear them. There's no time. R2 and I are leaving shortly to accompany Admiral Atmar on a mission. My sweet ride's first mission uh, still has that new starfighter smell. Your mission can wait a bit. We want to hear your story. But, but, but the Admiral is most anxious no to... No hurry. It'll give me more time to bust this little lady. Go ahead, 3PO. Tell us your story. I don't remember any of it. It uh, seems my memory was wiped. And... You have had my memory all this time. Well, jump to it, R2. Now, thanks to you, I do have a story to tell. Ah, yes, it is all coming back to me now. Buckle up, it is a thrilling day of turmoil had engulfed the Galactic Republic. Whoa! The taxation of trade routes to outlying star systems was in dispute. Well, uh, perhaps I should fast forward to the day the unfinished Prego baited me first laid eyes on Anakin Skywalker. That looks Such good. disrespect for all that political stuff, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's so funny, you know, when we look at a clip like that and we think of all the, all the man hours that go into doing something like that, right from the, the inception of the writing and, the, and the, all the animation, the early stuff, and then uh, as it goes, uh, then, then we get involved as actors. It's to be part of this uh, situation right here with Lego and Star Wars, um, I'd just like to personally say thank you to the guys at Lego here, to, uh, to the ones who you know, uh, higher ups that uh, to have us in on it because we're, we're having a great time. I love the way it, it actually pokes fun at the whole thing without in any way being disrespectful. I think right. it's a very clever balance. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, I, I love, I, we all love Star Wars, so even finding fault in some things, it still comes out of love for sure.
but we enjoy working with all of you guys and and it's really been the key to our success the collaboration with lucasfilm and having the the amazing talent that's you know sitting up here on this panel today um and i i hope everybody in the audience can feel the the love and dedication from all these guys um creating what we do and uh, i know we were gonna talk a little we have a crazy way of working together because we this is the first time we've ever been in a all three of us have been in the same room <laughs> right, right, in right. maybe a year and a half or two yeah, years. Yeah, this is true. Because uh, be usually, basically, how we, uh, how we record Anthony. Um, I, I'm like, in a studio in, by myself in the middle of London right. at about 3 or 4 in the afternoon, which in Californian time it's is... It's like 7 o'clock in the morning. So I crawl out of bed. I have a studio in my home, as I mentioned. And I, I get a, now, but I always put clothes on. I just want you to know that. I was gonna, I wasn't gonna go. No, no. There, okay, you know, Rhett, it's a eight. It's eight steps from my front door to my studio. So anyway, I go in, I get it set up on Skype. Anthony's there in the studio in London. Michael is on the four hundred five. <laughs> well, no, I, I, no, no. I, I drive my son to school, and he gets to school around seven forty-five. So then I turn. Then uh, the phone rings, and uh, yeah. I get to listen to it. And, and this is one of those, it's not a handheld phone, is it? We <laughs> no. don't really encourage this kind of thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I get to... So, uh, uh, yeah, so some people get to listen to you know NPR in their car in the work morning. I get to listen to Anthony Daniels perform there, C-3PO. There we go. So, so, so it's a so, great way to start ever. the day. So, can I, so collectively, we, uh, we help Anthony, which basically, you know, Anthony Well, wait, Daniels, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. It starts, first of all, you send me, very politely, oh, you okay, send this, me we're by back. email the scripts. And these come in right. acres and acres. I'm reading, uh, you know, these uh, documents. Right. And, and I cross a lot of the stuff out, and I put X's <laughs> by it, all that, that kind of thing. And then we have a phone script right. conference, right. and I do even more crossing right. out, because I got a pencil. <laughs> and then we get to the studio, and then... Then you change we, stuff even more. <laughs> and then we, we just laugh and laugh and laugh. Oh, it is wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, it it's is one fun. of the happiest jobs I do. We, we did yeah. get to record you one time in L.A. a year or so yes. ago, and that yeah, was that Yes, actually, great. when you yeah. came out, just yeah, wonderful. Was wonderful. that was wonderful. Yeah. Why don't you do it more often? Because you don't provide the first class okay, airfare from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very cheap production. <laughs> I see. Yes, well... Anyway, so it's uh, no, it's a it's a joy to work. Uh, actually, what you don't realize in that clip, and I I've forgotten about it, in in one of the pre, what do they call prequels, um, I'm going to demonstrate. There I am on a blue floor with a blue wall, and uh, something's happening. And George comes up and says, oh, mm, "Arthur's going to be here. We'll put him in later." Mm. <laughs> and then I got so bored with doing blue screen stuff. You know, it's no fun walking along by yourself saying. <laughs> You're exaggerating, etc. And then I saw, and I only just got it now. I saw over there a, one of those vacuum cleaners, yes. a dome thing, yes. and I pulled it along by its hose thing. And I'm like, oh, "You're exaggerating. You couldn't possibly." Have and of course, all the crew loved it. And George, for some reason, didn't keep it in. But you, you put it in there. Put Thank you in. very much. <laughs> I like, I like when you release the hose and, the, and he makes a little yeah. jump as the hose goes it. into the, yeah. <clears throat> but it's also, uh, the, the bit I love most is uh, we do a lot of lines, as it were, wild, without any pictures. And then if we're lucky, we get lots of footage back to just tweak a bit. And then I can look at the scene that's on there and say, oh, wait a minute, we, there's a bit there we could add. He could react to that happening. Right. And that's really putting the dream topping on the cake, yeah. isn't it? There's a lot of cartoons we do um, that what we've animated, we, we do the animation, or we do the voices first, and then they animate after. That's basically how cartoons are done. Some projects have the money behind them that we can then take what Anthony was saying is we get the, f the film back, and there's a, actually in the, some of these clips you've heard earlier, there was dummy lines. You know, either the animator or somebody else did a scratch track. And so then what we're able to do is get the actor back in and say, okay, here's the clip. We're going to do this. And Anthony's going, yes, okay, right. I see what's going on now. What about here? We could add this little thing. And it's like, please, you know, the more we get, the better. So. I never get paid for those extra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always open. Moving along, my moving mouth. along. Just, just moving along. We... Yeah, X and the other thing. Oh, anyway, so, hey, how about them? Well, now that you've heard from, from all of us and we've showed you some hopefully fun stuff to watch, we'd like to open it up to you guys to uh, ask some questions of the panel. If you have any questions for the team up here, 
Should we get some lights up so we can see <laughs> evil faces, polite faces, smiling faces? There's our two. Lovely. When is the cartoon Joy Tales is coming out? Uh, Joy Tales will premiere this summer on Disney XD starting in July. There are um, five specials and they will air throughout the summer leading into the early fall. Cool. <laughs> cool. You heard it here first. Cool. Thank you for your question. Hi guys, my name is George. Uh, just when you guys are making the episodes for Legos, do you guys have to base it on um, models that already exist? Or if not, do you guys then build it later on for, for sale? Like, do you, are you guys limited by Lego saying, well, this bottle doesn't exist, so we can't use it in the uh, episode? It, it's really a mix. Um, the, the good news is that we've been making models for quite a number of years now that you know, we have a lot of vehicles from the Star Wars universe, and if we need to create other vehicles um, specifically for the content, uh, again, we, we talk to our partners at Lucasfilm, and, and we've done that as well. Oh, thank you. Uh, there's one vehicle, uh, and I have a little bit of a forum here, <laughs> that I, it's, like, it's been a big part of these shows, but I would love to see for real in Lego form sometime, which is the bus, the, the Padawan bus. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. The Padawan bus. <laughs> yeah, so. That's my it, little vote there. If it's going to be a five-part special, which two movies are you going to like put in one episode? Ah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, the, is it okay to talk about where all the episodes are laid out? Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't see anybody one, from, from the Lego first or one. Lucas the first episode covers the first two movies, The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. The second movie covers Revenge of the Sith and has a little bit of extra kind of stuff that takes place during the Clone Wars in it. Uh, the third episode covers A New Hope and has a little bit of Rebels in it. Uh, <clears throat> and then the fifth episode is All Empire Strikes Back. And the, uh, sorry, the fourth episode is All Empire Strikes Back and the fifth episode is All Return of the Jedi. So that's how it works out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first, Anthony, you're my favorite character in the Star Wars. <laughs> What's your favorite character in Star Wars? No, wait, no, I was saying that he's, he, you're my favorite character. Could you say that louder, please? <laughs> <laughs> that is so nice. You make me feel very honored. Thank you very much. And I was wondering, what's your favorite part in any of the Star Wars movies? My favorite part in any of the Star Wars movies is generally taking the gold costume off at the end of <laughs> any, any day. But actually, I did, you remember in uh, episode six, um, Return of the Jedi, Han Solo, impossible man, <laughs> um, <laughs> was really very unkind to 3PO, and there was a moment with Ewoks where he's hanging upside down over a wood burning fire, and he says, and they're all going, mini, 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 or whatever, you walk sound like. Um, and he said, what are they saying, 3PO? And 3PO, you can almost see the smile on his face. It appears, Captain Sailor, that you are to be the main course at a banquet given in my honor. <laughs> That's my favorite line. I remember a long, I can't remember how long ago, but they were the little shorts. And there, one of them was called, You Can't Break in Space. It was with the Legos. Are you going to add those into the movies? Am I the one that remembers those? I, I don't know that one. Yeah, it was Did so you dream it? No, it was online. <laughs> and that I that might have been fan-made. That might have been a fan, fan made. Yeah, maybe. It was funny. Yeah, you should add those. There's a lot of content. Uh, if it was funny, we, we wouldn't have it in. No, no. it's funny. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll so tell you with the shorts. One of the one of the funniest things for me was we recorded a line where or a scene where um, there was some kind of hole in in the wall or whatever, and three PO you know could get through like that, and then suddenly he's pulling Chewbacca through, and Chewbacca <clears throat> and. Uh, you know, uh, you've been overeating again, or something like that, that I said. And so we filmed, and it was a very, we recorded it, it was very f funny. And then you guys came back to me and went, 
um, we just realized all characters in Lego are the same size. <laughs> if you can get through the hole, so can Chewbacca. We had to rewrite the whole thing. Do you remember that? It's very embarrassing. I wasn't going to tell it, but you know, what the heck. Yeah, thanks for that. In fact, we have a joke about that in one of the, uh, the, the New Hope episode when Luke comes in to rescue Princess Leia, and she goes, aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? And he goes, I'm actually the exact same size as everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lego. Yeah, it's Lego world. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Hey guys, um, big fan of Lego. Um, just want to ask you, Anthony, um, what's it like working with Lego rather than any other company you've worked with? Well, I, I've had some wonderful experiences with, with Lego, both uh, audibly and many years ago, I was invited to Billund in, in uh, Denmark where the Lego bricks are made and to give a talk to the, the workforce there. And I saw these huge vats of uh, red, yellow, green, and I was about to plunge, uh, little pebbles of plastic, and I wanted to plunge my hands in, and, and they said, don't touch, don't touch, because if one green thing gets in the red thing, they've got to throw it all away. But the worst moment was when they took me into the factory where they make everything, make all the bricks, make all the shapes that you know and love. And it was fantastic, because there were real robots going on tracks on the floor, and dropping boxes here, picking up boxes there. Real robots all getting on really well together. And it was, I was just like, this is amazing, amazing. I felt love for them. I felt affection. <laughs> I think we could probably get you a job there. But, it's like but a spirit. As, as, we, as we left, it was quite a big place. As we left, the guy just flicked off the light switch and left them in the dark. I, th I thought it was incredibly cruel, <laughs> unfeeling. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what do you think is better, the Star Wars sa saga or the Lego Star Wars? <laughs> oh, tough question. Okay, be political here. <laughs> be careful. Answer correctly, Anthony. Answer. Oh, me. Um, it was quite funny, actually, because. We've worked together quite a lot in the last couple of years. And sometimes we're crying with laughter because the scripts are quite funny. And um, you, know, you heard him say that. Right? And so, yeah. I get, so I arrive at uh, Pinewood Studios to be in the film, episode seven. And I feel totally at home being 3PO. Um, but then I realize the kind of sense of the whole thing at, in the studio is not what we are doing. We have fun, we giggle, we laugh, whatever, and suddenly you're in Star Wars Episode Seven, and there's all sorts of bad things happening and exciting things happening for real. And uh, I had to kind of remember, I'm not in a Lego movie yeah. at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, I have to say that one of the proudest moments was sitting in a, a theater in um, New York watching uh, the Lego movie. Which, yeah, and I'm kind of, you know, this is all called some animation, whatever. Um, I liked, and then suddenly the whole Star Wars sequence happens, and the audience erupted. <laughs> Two minutes, I think it was, or 80 seconds, and the audience loved it, and I felt so proud. <laughs> proud, proud, and a little humble. Well, one thing that's been so fun uh, having you be part of our shows, aside from the fact that brilliant your performances is that we've been able to really work and have so much fun with your character and have you do things that you would never do in the movies. So if you remember, there was the episode from the Yoda Chronicles where he, his mind was wiped by oh. Senator Organa yeah. and then it turned him into like a Rambo style, right. you know, kick butt and you, guy. And you had so that was so much fun to do. You had trepidation going into that episode. I remember it was sort of like he, uh, just a real quick story. He, he, he mentioned to me, he says, now what I was, what I was thinking is that we would, I would go into, and you went into this amazing other voice. I don't know. You maybe don't remember that. And you said, it. yeah, I'll do it some, whatever. And I went, you know, I think your fans want you to stay as C-3PO, but the energy that you're giving me and the attitude will keep that. And he says, well, I don't really think I'm ready to, to, to take him down that road. And I says, that's why I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, and it worked out really well. It was a very funny episode. It did. So. This is the part of the director, you see. Yes, yes, yes. I earned my stripe there just then. <laughs> anyway. 
I, you guys can stay here. <laughs> um, I grew up with you as well as Lego, and now the next generation is growing up with Lego and Star Wars together. You have a captive audience here today of children and the next generation of, of you sitting up there. What advice do you have for them today to be creators like you? Oh, if you want to create, uh, just love the stuff that you do as much as we all do, and uh, just uh, try to find fun new ways to create different ways of of experiencing it you know it just comes from fandom and I've been a fan of Star Wars since the very first movie came out and, and to have a chance to work with, with everyone here on it it's just been so exciting and thrilling but it's it yeah I guess you just have to really just love what you're doing so much that you're willing to sort of put up with maybe rejection or not having it work out at first but uh, yeah that's my experience from the Lego side I mean the creativity and the pride of creation and, and achievement um, and trying to fuel kids' creativity and, and foster that is, is something that, you know, just aren't words for employees at the Lego company. They're definitely something that we try to live by and something that we try to do and definitely something that we try to instill in the content that we create because, you know, no one tells a Star Wars story better than, than Lucasfilm. So the whole conversation that we had was why is it a Lego Star Wars story? What makes it fun to be in that universe? And so... We try to take that and think about that and, and everything that we, we create, and hopefully that in turn also inspires creativity in, in our fan base. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have two questions. First, are you ever going to make a Lego movie with R2-D2 and C-3PO going on this wild adventure? And second, are you going to update a Lego Death Star? <laughs> I don't actually know if I can answer either of those questions. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we can answer either of those right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. But, but uh, stay Come tuned. back to the next celebration. Stay tuned we'll for in the future. The uh, you'll be happily surprised with, with what's coming out for the future. Uh, Droid Tales, you know, and part of it is retelling the, the original movies, but the other part of it is a thrilling adventure of, of C-3PO, uh, and R2-D2 having a sort of a standalone adventure that sort of bookends all the episodes. So they have a lot of fun in this, uh, in this show, too. C-3PO, I want to say that I love when you do your voice. And are they going to make, like, all seven, like, are they going to have six droid tales? And are they going to come out at all the same time? Or are they going to come out at different times? I think that's a production question. I, I'm just an actor. <laughs> they don't tell me very much. Uh, the plan right now, um, they will, uh, the first episode will, will, will premiere this summer in July. And then I believe after that, uh, they'll be on Disney XD uh, one every month leading into the fall. And I believe they're going to end around October. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, Mr. Daniels, thanks a lot for being C-3PO and being an everlasting part of Star Wars. You're definitely one of my favorite characters. Um, and second of all, for the question, um, do you think there could be anything like in C-3PO's memory that maybe the rest of the, like Luke, Leia, Han, Chewie, they all missed that could maybe foreshadow Episode Seven or something? <laughs> Can we answer that one? <laughs> Um, we are, um, walls have ears, and in this case, they are Mickey Mouse ears. Uh, the Walt Disney Company have me wired electronically. If I say anything, anything about episode, I can't even say the name, the next episode, I would disappear off the galaxy. Um, come, come and ask me uh, at the next celebration. But it's a very neat idea, but I'm not saying anything. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to say hey, look, that uh, I'm really glad that C-3PO, C-3PO is finally getting his own series. He's definitely one of my favorite characters in the universe. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's you. <laughs> what am I doing there? <laughs> <laughs> it's a mirror shot. It is. Oh, I look, you uh, just turn around so everybody can see. <laughs> Don't, don't we look exactly like? Is this a scary moment? My doppelganger. Fantastic. What, what, what was your question? My other question was, if there was anything in the uh, Lego series 
that Lucasfilm has rejected or hasn't approved. Howard Rothman, is there anything, <laughs> is there anything in uh, the, is there anything in the Lego series that these gentlemen over here, uh, well, we haven't rehearsed this. Sit down. Uh, no, it's Percha. Is there anything um, that you've rejected? Lots. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, usually, it's just if they got sleep, uh, if they got 3PO written wrong, I have to correct it because otherwise I'm going to get hell from this guy. Never hear the end. Howard, would you explain who you are? I've been uh, kind of hanging around Lucasfilm for a long time. <laughs> Thirty-five years, exactly. And what is the t the title you currently work under? I am the head of franchise management, which means I kind of oversee the Star Wars brand. Everything. So. Everything. <laughs> Howard has, at some point or other, brought you every single piece of merchandise, including that extraordinary suit you're wearing. Um, <laughs> over the years, he pretty much single-handedly made every lightsaber. No, I, di I did not do anything single-handedly. Uh -huh. okay, so yeah, the truth is, thing. I've got an amazing job, it's a really fun job, but the thing that makes it possible is the amazing team of people that we have there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just a lucky guy who gets to oversee a lot of incredibly creative and brilliant people. Mm -hmm. And he's very modest too. <laughs> but, Thank but you, you, Howard. <laughs> Thank you, Howard. Howard. Um, does, does R2D2 God does, cause you, because he three PO, cause he's a joy, cause he's a, because he's yellow, cause R two, R two's really great, yeah. because he's my favorite character. He's, oh, thank he's you. a little, because he's, um, he just rolls. He just right. roll around cause, because of C-3PO always walks with him everywhere. Right. Um, I think R2-D2 is, is quite jealous of C-3PO because, uh, because R2 is basically a plumber. Uh, what's it, an astromech? And he's, the, he's, just, he's really just blue and white and ordinary. And 3PO's gold and <laughs> clever and everything. So, um, but they're pretty good friends, yes. They look after each other, which is important. Um, what is your favorite uh, thing to do? Like, would you rather do Yoda Chronicles or Star Wars, like, all the movies? That's a terror. you can't ask me that here. <laughs> I will tell you, I will tell you seriously. Seriously, I do mean this. I have more fun doing with you guys. When you're making a film, it's such a big, a big deal, such a big enterprise. It's very exciting, um, and it can be fun, but most of the time, it's quite a lot of hard work. You guys, particularly if 3PO is panicking, uh, it's a lot of work, but we, do, we laugh more, so that's really good. Thank you. Guys, just, uh, I'm sorry, just a couple more questions and we have to, I'm being told we have to go. So I grew up on this in Star Wars and my friends and I get together every Christmas and we watch that Christmas special that was done. What was that about? Was that Lucas's idea or just directors? We have this debate every Christmas where they have to go back to Chewbacca's planet and save Christmas and Han Solo's in it. Uh, it's called Life Day. Yeah. <laughs> what is that about? Have have we ever done? Have you ever done? We did on, in, um, in one of the Ryota Chronicles episodes, there was a thing where they were searching the galaxy for Jack 14, and Cad Bane 
uh, kick down the door, and he goes, I've got you now. And uh, Chewbacca and his family were celebrating Life Day, and then they yelled at him, and he ran away. So that was our that was our little reference to Yamage. the, to the okay. Star Wars and what holiday was special. Life Day about? Who who did that? Was that George Lucas? The, the original one, like that, not the Lego Life one. Life Day is a traditional holiday of the Wookiees of Kashyyyk. <laughs> okay, it's a well, solemn holiday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I love the way activity. you say that with a straight face. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Is that, yeah. One more question? Yeah, we can take one more. In Return of the Jedi, when Luke takes off Darth Vader's mask, it's not three pieces, it's only one piece in Lego. So <laughs> what's it going to be like since it's not fully taken off in the movie? That's a very good question. I'm sure the brilliant animators who uh, you know, work on our, our films are going to figure out how to how to do that, just like when the Emperor takes down his hood and, and we do a quick little switcheroo. I'm sure they'll figure it out. It'll look good, I guarantee it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to us. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for the, the okay. panel. Okay, um, but you know at the end of some Star Wars movies there's a medal celebration. Well, I think today we should end this panel with the award to certain heroes here on the stage of not a medal, but a Lego key ring. <laughs> so stand forward to receive your Lego key ring. Thank you very much. And yours. There you oh, stand forward. Oh, hold it with pride. Hold it with pride. Great moment right here. Fine. And Thank you. Oh, no. There you go. And for services to spelling and punctuation, your heroes. Thank you. Thank you. And last, last but not least, we'd like to thank these talented men for uh, joining us today. I think we have a Up on the stage, our master model builders uh, made some gifts for you. I believe this, uh, this statue here is of, this is of Mr. Michael Price. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Look at this. And for Mr. Mr. Anthony Daniels. That's awesome. Oh and uh, Donovan, I think you might be wearing the same shirt today. There you go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Incredible. Thank you, everybody. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you very much for coming. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And uh, for you folks in the audience, please be sure to tune in this July for the premiere of Droid Tales on Disney XD. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, one more thing for you. Come back in. Uh, apologize, we got a, a, a little crazy up here. Uh, reach under your chair. There might be a little something under there, if it's still there. Is it there? Random, uh, random chairs, random chairs. You got one, yes, yes. Be sure and check under the chairs. Thank you very much.